Alright, testing, testing, just real quick. Is my mic working? Oh, it is? Shoot, I'm sorry, I don't know um, which button is to mute on my- in this mic, or which button is to, like, um... Okay, so, um, since, um, the chat's probably gonna go, like, all the way up, and for the people that are just joining in, basically, we're gonna be doing Dorian's Romance again, we're gonna be doing a rerun, because I really need to, um, hop back on Dorian's Romance again, because Dorian's the best character, in my opinion, in this whole game. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be doing Dorian's Romance again. Um, we did it in the past, but I didn't get- I don't think I record the whole thing. So this time I'm gonna record every single- Well, not every day, but, um, whenever I feel like playing Dragon Age, we're gonna hop back on and do, um, Dorian's Romance. So, instead of, um, making a whole new game and doing all the beginning stuff again, I decided we're just gonna be loading in to where we're about to meet, um, Bull. So it'll make things a lot quicker for me, and we'll be starting from there instead. This time it's going to be different. But yeah, we're going to be doing um, Dorian's Romance again, and I'm going to be trying to remake my character later on. I don't, I don't think I unlocked that map area yet where um, I can recreate my character. So, but yeah, um, right now we're going to be using our character Leon, and we're going to be doing Dorian's Romance this time. And um, we're gonna be start. We're gonna start to save the game um, past um, Red Cliff, or we're probably gonna be saving the game um, by then. So I'm gonna be deleting the past saves that we made on here. Um, but I'm gonna keep the three uh, main um, saves because we're gonna need those big time if we're gonna be trying this out. Because I don't know if this is gonna work. So right now I'm actually gonna be deleting all the saves that we made, and we're going to be starting um, from where we're going to meet Dor- um, Bull, my bad. <laughs> but we're going to be meeting Dorian here really soon, I just need to level up the characters and do all the side quests again. Um, but yeah, um, it is going to be a long process because I have to go through and do all the side quests again and level up big time. And yeah, it's going to- this game's probably going to take me another year to play, but we'll see what happens. I hope you guys um, jump in. I hope you guys enjoy um, Dorian's um, romance again. And after Dorian, we're going to be moving on straight to either Colin, Blackwall, or Solus next. I've decided that I'm going to be doing my main characters first, the characters I love romance first. Then we're going to be hopping on to my least favorite characters' romances. But yeah, um,. Here we go guys, I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. So first, let me delete all of the saves real quick. It's gonna hurt me to do this, but we're gonna be restarting anyways. So, um, yeah, we're just gonna be deleting all these saves so we can get started here. And then I'm gonna keep, um, like I said, the main three saves, because we're gonna need those big time. So look at all this process I'm deleting right now, look at all this progress, oh my god. But yeah, we're gonna be using Leon again. Um, so I don't have to go through the whole process of just restarting again. Um, but if I do need to, um, restart, I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to restart. Alright, so I need to not delete... Storm Coast. I can't delete that, don't delete the Storm Coast. Alright, there we go. Keep the main three saves, like I said before. Alright, so we're gonna start right here. Um, this is when we're gonna be talking to Krim, and we're gonna be meeting, um, like I said, we're gonna go meet, um, uh, Bull. So, here we go guys, I hope you enjoyed the adventure, I'm gonna be turning off my mic, um, like I always do for these type of series, and, yeah, you guys pretty much know how the story goes by now, because we played this game so many times already, so, um, I hope you enjoy, and let's get started, shall we?
Have you had any trouble with them? Not at all. I will inform you if that changes. Thank you for coming. Maybe you can solve this mess. Our missing patrols are being held hostage by Avar, barbarians from the mountains. What are they doing in a bog? That's the thing. Their leader, he wants them to fight you, because you're the Herald of Andraste. What do they have against Andraste? Well, the Avar think there are gods in nature, as in, the sky has a god and the forest. The Avar say you're claiming to be sent by one, and they'll challenge the will of your god with their own. I think their leader's just a boastful little prick who wants to brag he killed you. I've survived demons. I think I can handle myself against some southern barbarians. Yeah, you'd think. But they're a brawny bunch. Getting to our troops won't be easy. You'll have to fight your way through undead. Wait, you're not squeamish about undead, are you? It doesn't matter. I'm not letting the Avar butcher the Inquisition's people. I appreciate it. The Avar are holed up in the castle on the other side of the Fallow Mire. Make her willing, the Inquisition's people are still alive. This might interest you, sir. What is it? See for yourself, sir. more further in. Look. Signs of a plague. It must have been a terrible illness. No one's come to reclaim the land. No one living at any rate. Careful. Disturbing the water draws them out.
never seen their like before. out the undead we could use them to fight on dry land keep an eye out for more then so we're taking the magical fire with us
No sign of the Avar who want to challenge me. Or the Inquisition's soldiers. I hope the Avar haven't gotten bored with the hostages and that they understand how hostages work. So, you're Herald of Andraste. My kin want you dead, Lowlander, but it's not my job. No fears from me. Why aren't you with the other Avar? Trying to figure out this hole in the world. Never seen anything like it's like. They spit out angry spirits. Endless. What the sky's trying to tell us? I don't know. Caused by the breach in the sky. It was some kind of magic gone wrong. I know that, Lowlander. I'm talking about the Lady of the Skies. Do you not know her? Can't you see the warning she writes through the bird flocks in the air? Interesting how widely Ferelden beliefs diverge. Call me Ferelden again, Elf, and see how far you get. I thought the Avar wanted to fight me. Our chieftain's son wants to fight you. I'm called him when the dead pile up. Rites to the gods, mending for the bleeding, a dagger for the dying. That's what I do. I don't pick up a blade for a whelp's trophy hunt. The other of our kidnapped an Inquisition patrol. Are they all right? A few were injured in the skirmish, but they were alive. Last I saw them. Someone's trained them well. They killed more of us than I thought they would. Farewell, then. Watch the water.
Oh, sorry.
have a path free of corpses back to the shore. The fewer of these creatures, the better. We'll need some of your cloth for bandages. Tell Master Harry, good materials cost good. Need something? Could I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Greetings, Herald of Andraste. 
Master ha Can I help you with something? What do you do here? I make sure the Inquisition troops have food in their bellies and iron in their hands. Both are important. Lots of people expecting us to be heroes, marching all day to fight the demons. Turns out heroes need to dig latrines just like everyone else. How does someone end up as quartermaster for the Inquisition? I served for Elden under Ten Logan McTeer. Best commanding officer this world has ever seen. After they all turned on him at Denerim, though, there wasn't much use for people who held that opinion. Queen Honora offered my services to the Inquisition. It was a kindness. She knew I supported her father and got me away from the political garbage. I'm used to delivering children and helping old men through the winter cough. Seeing these injuries. I will keep the peace while you and the others appeal to the Chantry in Val Royale. Better ready yourself for the blame you will be rightly assigned. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask him. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry says. I will go with him. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. The city still mourns. Just a guess seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Beric. My Lord Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. They wish to return to them. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As you say, my lady.
I'm the wary guardsman. Good people of Val Royal, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of a murderer. Well, wonder no more. Behold, the so-called Herald of Andraste, claiming to rise where our beloved fell. We say this is a false prophet. The Maker would say no elf in our hour of need. You say I am the enemy. The breach in the sky is our true enemy. We must unite to stop it. It's true. The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be safe once more. Still yourself. She is beneath us. Was that display supposed to impress me? On the contrary, it wasn't for you at all. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with... You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement. Raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet. You should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. If you're not here to help the Chantry, then you just came to make speeches. I came to see what frightens old women so, and to laugh. But Lord Seeker, what if he really was sent by the Maker? What if... You are called to a higher purpose. Do not question. I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing, and the Inquisition less than nothing. Templars, Val Royo is unworthy of our protection. We march. Charming fellow, isn't he? Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? Do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man, never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. It doesn't look like we'll be getting the Templars to help us after all. I wouldn't write them off so quickly. There must be those in the Order who see what he's become. Either way, we should first return to Haven and inform the others. It seems strange. What's that? An arrow with a message? The Templars? I believe that met... You are the Herald of Andraste, are you not? I have an invitation for you.
The Lord Seeker may not think you're a threat, but he's not here right now. If I might have a moment of your time. Grand Enchanter Fiona? Leader of the Mage Rebellion. Is it not dangerous for you to be here? I heard of this gathering, and I wanted to see the fabled Herald of Andraste with my own eyes. If it's help with the breach you seek, perhaps you should look among your fellow mages. I'm surprised the leader of the mages wasn't at the Conclave. Yes. You were supposed to be, and yet somehow you avoided death. As did the Lord Seeker, you'll note. Both of us sent negotiators in our stead in case it was a trap. I won't pretend I'm not glad to live. I lost many dear friends that day. It disgusts me to think the Templars will get away with it. I'm hoping you won't let them. So you think the Templars are responsible? Why wouldn't she? Lucius hardly seems broken up over his losses, if he's concerned about them at all. You heard him. You think he wouldn't happily kill the Divine to turn people against us? So yes, I think he did it. More than I think you did it, at any rate. Does that mean the mages will help us? We are willing to discuss it with the Inquisition, at least. Consider this an invitation to Redcliffe. Come, meet with the mages. An alliance could help us both, after all. I hope to see you there. Au revoir, my Lord Herald. Come, let us return to Haven. For she who trusts in the Maker, fire is her water. As the moth sees light and goes on the Walk safely. It's good you've returned. We heard of your encounter. You heard? My agents in a city sent word ahead, of course. It's a shame the Templars have abandoned their senses, as well as the capital. At least we know how to approach the mages and Templars now. Do we? Lord Seeker Lucius is not the man I remember. True, he has taken the order somewhere, but to do what? My reports have been very odd. We must look into it. I'm certain not everyone in the order will support the Lord Seeker. Or the Herald could simply go to meet the mages in Redcliffe instead. You think the Mage Rebellion is more united? It could be ten times worse. I could at least find out what the mages want. No doubt what they've always wanted. Support for their cause. 
We shouldn't discount Redcliffe. The mages may be worth the risk. They are powerful, Ambassador, but more desperate than you realize. You think the invitation could be some kind of trap? If some among the rebel mages were responsible for what happened at the Conclave, the same could be said about the Templars. True enough. Right now, I'm not certain we have enough influence to approach the Order safely. Then the Inquisition needs agents in more places. That's something you can help with. In the meantime, we should consider other options. There is one other matter. Several months ago, the Grey Wardens of Ferelden vanished. I sent word to those in Orlais, but they have also disappeared. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even consider the idea they're involved in all this, but the timing is curious. Grey Wardens? I'm not familiar with them. They're an ancient order that has existed to fight Darkspawn invasions since the First Blights thousands of years ago. They have faded since those glory days, but haven't disappeared entirely. Ordinarily, their order is neutral in political affairs, but they appear in strange places. That does sound odd, I agree. The others have disregarded my suspicion, but I cannot ignore it. Two days ago, my agents in the Hinterlands heard news of a Grey Warden by the name of Blackwall. If you have the opportunity, please seek him out. Perhaps he can put my mind at ease. And if he can't? Then there may be more going on than we thought. Excuse me. I've got a message for the Inquisition, but I'm having a hard time getting anyone to talk to me. Who are you, soldier? Comissius Aklasi with the Bulls Chargers Mercenary Company. We mostly work out of Ole and Navarra. We've got word of some Divinta mercenaries gathering out on the Storm Coast. My company commander, Iron Bull, offers the information free of charge. If you'd like to see what the Bulls Chargers can do for the Inquisition, meet us there and watch us work. What can your bull's charges offer the Inquisition? We're loyal, we're tough, and we don't break contracts. Ask around, Val Royo. We've got references. What should I know about your commander? Ein Bull. He's one of those Canari, the big guys with the horns. He leads from the front, he pays well, and he's a lot smarter than the last bastard I worked for. Best of all, he's professional. We accept contracts with whoever makes the first real offer. You're the first time he's gone out of his way to pick a side. Why did your commander send us this information? Iron Bull wants to work for the Inquisition. He thinks you're doing good work. I look forward to meeting this Iron Bull. We're the best you'll find. Come to the Storm Coast and you can see us in action. breaking the Chantry's chain, but not running from the fight. What do you know of the Templars? Where do you think they get their leery?
hand out. Krim, how'd we do? Five or six wounded, Chief. No dead. That's what I like to hear. Let the throat cutters finish up, then break out the casks. So, you're with the Inquisition, huh? Glad you could make it. Come on, have a seat. Drinks are coming. Nicely done. I hear you're looking for work. I am. Not before my drink, though. I assume you remember Chromisius Aclasi, my lieutenant. Good to see you again. Throat cutters are done, Chief. Already? Have them check again. I don't want any of those Tevinter bastards getting away. No offense, Krem. <laughs> None taken. At least a bastard knows who his mother was. Puts him one up on you, Canari, right? So, you've seen us fight. We're expensive, but we're worth it. <laughs> and I'm sure the Inquisition can afford us. How much is this going to cost me, exactly? Wouldn't cost you anything, personally. Unless you want to buy drinks later. Your ambassador, uh, what's her name? Josephine. We'd go through her and get the payments set up. Gold will take care of itself. Don't worry about that. All that matters is we're worth it. <laughs> the Chargers seem like an excellent company. They are. But you're not just getting the boys. You're getting me. You need a frontline bodyguard. I'm your man. Whatever it is. Demons? Dragons? The bigger the better. And there's one other thing. Might be useful. Might piss you off. Never hear of the Ben Hasra. They're a Kunari organization, right? The equivalent of their guards and city watch. I'd go closer to spies. But yeah, that's them. Or, well... Us. The Bin Hasrath are concerned about the breach. Magic out of control like that could cause trouble everywhere. I've been ordered to join the Inquisition, get close to the people in charge, and send reports on what's happening. But I also get reports from Ben Hasrath agents all over Orlais. You sign me on, I'll share them with your people. You're a Kunari spy, and you just... told me. Whatever happened at that Conclave thing, it's bad. Someone needs to get that breach closed. So whatever I am, I'm on your side. You still could have hidden what you are. From something called the Inquisition? <laughs> I'd have been tipped sooner or later. Better you hear it right up front from me. What would you send home in these reports of yours? Enough to keep my superiors happy. Nothing that'll compromise your operations. The Canari want to know if they need to launch an invasion to stop the whole damn world from falling apart. You let me send word of what you're doing, it'll put some minds at ease. That's good for everyone. What's in these Ben Hasrath reports you're offering to share? Enemy movements, suspicious activity, intriguing gossip. It's a bit of everything. Alone there, not much. But if your spy master is worth a damn, she'll put him to good use. She? <laughs> I did a little research. Plus, I've always had a weakness for redheads. All right, you're in. Excellent. Krem, tell the men to finish drinking on the road. The Chargers just got hired. What about the casks, Chief? We just opened them up with axes. Find some way to seal them. You're Tevinter, right? Try blood magic. We'll meet you back at Haven.
I've got good form. Cullen's putting his Templar training to good use. Did Cullen tell you he was a Templar? He's not wearing the armor. He didn't have to. Might not be a Templar shield, but it's a Templar holding it. He angles the shield just a bit down. Helps direct fire or acid away, so it doesn't spray right into your face. Kanari learned the same thing when we trained to fight to Vinter Mages. Your Templar's doing good work. I'm impressed by what Cullen has accomplished with the troops. Damn right. It takes time to build a group into a team, but he's got their loyalty. Now he just needs them to make a decent shield wall, and they'll be good to go. Biggest problem for the Inquisition right now isn't on the front line. It's at the top. You've got no leader, no Inquisitor. And maybe we need one. I'd be willing. You? Huh. Why you? Nobody else seems to be stepping forward, and since I can seal rifts, I'm here whether I like it or not. If it proved necessary to have an Inquisitor, I could make a go of it. Hmm. For a second there, you sounded like a canary. My people don't pick leaders from the strongest, or the smartest, or even the most talented. We pick the ones willing to make the hard decisions, and live with the consequences. Ah, who knows? Maybe you sealed the breach. The Chantry gets off its ass, and all those soldiers go home and get fat. You think? It could happen. It won't, but it could. How's it going? I'd like to know more about your work with the Ben Hasrat. Ben Hasrat is actually a general term. You've got the secret police who investigate problems inside our territory. You've got the re-educators who take people with problems and fix their minds. Or make them disappear. And then you've got the spies. How do the re-educators work? I only know the basics. Wasn't my area. That said, keep a man awake long enough, ask the right questions, give the right potions, and you can get him to say anything. You don't need blood magic or demons to change someone's mind. We're a lot more fragile than we'd like to believe. You can alter someone's beliefs that easily. One of my friends was a re-educator. He said that every memory is like the page of a book. When you examine a memory, you're turning to that page. And when you're there, the page is laid bare. Write a few notes in the margins of the page. Erase a word here and there. And your whole outlook changes. I always felt a little weird reading after that conversation. The re-educators sound horrible. Yeah, they probably do. Here's the thing, though. What happens in Orlais when you commit a crime or betray a lord? They just lop your head off. At least the Canari try to fix you. None of those sound exactly like you. Yeah, I was a special case. They sent me to Saharan because they needed someone who could fight and hunt down problems. That whole island was a sack of cats. Incursions from Tevinta, Talvashath, and native rebels fighting both sides. And in the middle, me, trying to wrangle the rebels and restore order. I can't imagine that was easy. Nope. I hunted down a lot of rebels. Lost a lot of friends to the Vince, or the Fog Warriors, or the Talvashar. One day I woke up and couldn't think of a damned reason to keep doing my job. Turned myself into the re-educators. You'd heard what the re-educators did to their prisoners? Yes, I had. I wanted them to fix me like they fixed them. The Ben Hasrath ordered me to go to Orlais, ostensibly as a Talvashoth, and work undercover. That's how I ended up here. 
I'm glad you're here, Bull. Me too. If you ever need to talk more about all this, let me know. Nah, it was a long time ago. Thanks, though. How's it going? I'd like to know more about the Kunari. You writing a book? It's your culture, and I'd like to know you better. You could just ask. I am. All right. What do you want to know? How do the Kunari rule themselves? It's pretty simple. We've got the matriarchy, the priesthood, and the military. The priesthood figures out how Kunari should live in theory. The matriarchy makes it work in practice. And the military keeps the Kunari safe from outside threats. Does it actually work like that? Is there much infighting? <laughs> Not like you're thinking of. People disagree, yeah, but the priests are there to solve disagreements. Here in Olay, politicking comes from people putting their own gain ahead of the gains of society. If you do that among the Kunari, the Bin Hasrath set you straight. Or kill you. I heard there's no marriage among the Kunari. Yeah, that's true. Kunari love our friends like anyone does, but we don't have sex with them. Kunari don't have sex? <laughs> oh, we definitely have sex. Their Tamasrans will pop your cork whenever you need it. Seriously? Yes. It's not a big deal like it is here. It's like... I don't know. Going to see a healer. Sometimes it's this long, involved thing it takes all day, leaves you walking funny. Other times you're in and out in five minutes. Thank you. See you next week. So you've never really made love? Connected with someone in both body and soul? I don't know. One time they used this thing called the Sato Nerapan. It's a leather-wrapped rod on a harness. That wasn't really my soul. Also, there were more than two people. How is everyday life different for Kunari? Uh, depends on your job, I guess. Some are just about the same. A baker in Valroyo gets up, gets dressed, and starts work. A baker in Parvolan does the same thing. They don't care about the Empire or the Cube. Mostly, they worry about breaking eggs and hope the dough rises right. It can't be exactly the same. The Kunari have no personal freedoms. How many personal freedoms do you figure that baker in Valroyo has? Life isn't about freedom. The baker in Parvolin wonders if she'll be given enough eggs to do her work. Will they come on time? Will the kitchen workers get her bread while it's fresh, or will they come late and blame her because it's stale? Same crap in Valroyo. People are just people. What's it like growing up under the Kuhn? The Tamasrans raise us in these units of kids all our own age. They're like teachers or chantry sisters. They also help figure out what jobs we should do. They had me pegged for military work early on. When they learned I could hit stuff and lie, they started training me for the Ben Hasra. You never knew your parents? No. I know for you folks, that's a big deal. The Tamasrans were like our parents, though. Taught us to read, helped us go to sleep, all the parents' stuff. I remember the one who helped me build things with blocks. She laughed when I knocked everything down. Do you ever think about what would happen if the Kunari conquered Orle or Ferelden? Some folks, like Cassandra or Colin, would do fine if they didn't die fighting. Those two love rules. But the mages... Look at Solus. All that wandering in the Fade. They'd at least kill him. 
Varric's tall tales would land him in a re-education prison, drugged until his mind broke. So, to answer your question, no, I don't think about it much at all. The word Kunari, is that the race or the religion? Both, kind of. The humans and elves who follow the Kune are the Vidathari. The Kunari who break away from the Kune are Talvasha, deserters. What about Kunari who existed before the Kune? The people we came from. They're called the Kasseth, but we don't use that word for the race. We came south to Thedas because the Kasseth were... I don't know. We had to leave. The stories aren't clear. But I don't expect they look much like us. Whatever they are. See you later, boy. See ya. What's going on? So how did you get the name Iron Bull? I picked it. We don't have names under the cube. Just... I don't know. Job descriptions, I guess. When I came to Orlay, I chose the Iron Bull for myself. Why specifically Iron Bull? This may surprise you, but I really like hitting things. Also, it's THE Iron Bull, technically. I like having an article at the front. It makes it sound like I'm not even a person, just a mindless weapon. An implement of destruction. That really works for me. See you later, Bull. See ya. What can I do for you? See you later, Bull. See ya. What's going on? See you later, Bull. See ya. What's going on? I'd like to know more about your work with the Ben Hasra. Ben Hasra is actually a general term. You've got the secret police who investigate problems inside our territory. You've got the re-educators who take people with problems and fix their minds. Or make them disappear. And then you've got the spies. How do the re-educators work? I only know the basics. Wasn't my area. That said, keep a man awake long enough. Ask the right questions, give the right potions, and you can get him to say anything. You don't need blood magic or demons to change someone's mind. We're a lot more fragile than we'd like to believe. You can alter someone's beliefs that easily. One of my friends was a re-educator. He said that every memory is like the page of a book. When you examine a memory, you're turning to that page. And when you're there, the page is laid bare. Write a few notes in the margins of the page. Erase a word here and there and your whole outlook changes. I always felt a little weird reading after that conversation. The re-educators sound horrible. Yeah, they probably do. Here's the thing, though. What happens in Orlais when you commit a crime or betray a lord? They just lop your head off. At least the Canari try to fix you. None of those sound exactly like you. Yeah, I was a special case. They sent me to Saharan because they needed someone who could fight and hunt down problems. That whole island was a sack of cats. Incursions from Tevinta, Talvashath, and native rebels fighting both sides. And in the middle, me, trying to wrangle the rebels and restore order. 
Don't imagine that was easy. Nope. I hunted down a lot of rebels. Lost a lot of friends to the Vince and the Fog Warriors or the Talvashoth. One day I woke up and couldn't think of a damned reason to keep doing my job. Turned myself into the re-educators. You'd heard what the re-educators did to their prisoners? Yes, I had. I wanted them to fix me like they fixed them. The Ben Hasrath ordered me to go to Orlais, ostensibly as a Talvashoth, and work undercover. That's how I ended up here. It sounds like you had a rough life under the queue. What, three meals a day and free sex whenever I need it? <laughs> I came out here for the challenge, boss. Figured I'd rough it with you savages. Anyway, nice talking with you. As well. How are your charges? Well supplied. Haven is groaning under the weight. It wasn't built for this, but we'll make it serve. Heard anything worth noting? Too busy to hear things, and that's how I like it. Farewell. Make her be with you. Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. I didn't ask for this, but someone has to find a way to seal this breach. Spoken nobly indeed. You think I'm mocking you? This age has made people cynical. 
I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time has a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then, at least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate mage surrounded by Chantry forces, and unlike you, I do not have a divine mark protecting me. Cassandra has been accommodated, but you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. I thought you would be more interested in sharing your opinions of elven culture. You are Dalish, are you not? Yes, I am. The Dalish are the best hope for preserving the culture of our people. Our people? You use that phrase so casually. It should mean more. But the Dalish have forgotten that, among other things. Oh, but you know the truth, right? While they pass on stories, mangling details, I walk the fade. I have seen things they have not. The Dalish are trying to restore elven history. If you know something new, share it. Would your clan listen to what I had learned in my studies? My travels? Or would they mock the Flatir and his stories and go back to their ruins? At least you are asking. But here's something. I will answer as I can. I'd like to know more about the elves from before our time. The Dalish strive to remember Halam Shiral. But Halam Shiral was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlathan. Elvenan was the Empire. And Arlathan its greatest city. A place of magic and beauty, lost to time. You've studied ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlathan? We hear stories of them living in trees. And imagine wooden ramps or Dalish aravels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches. Palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who lived forever, for whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. Are all Dalish elves like my clan? No. Your clan was unique in having enough interest in human affairs to send you to spy upon the Divine's meeting. As your clans have been separate for so long, they have all changed, adapting to the lands in which they live. Some are no more than bandits. Others trade freely with humans. And some have disappeared entirely to the forests.
What can you tell me about elves living in human cities? The culture in alienages or among the slaves of the Vinter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past. They practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. Is the magic they teach in the circle different from the magic I learned with my people? No, and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water, but it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical, not needing Chantry approval, although they still frown on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. Legends of Elven Immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast. Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic in an unending symphony. It must have been beautiful. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. To be honest, I don't see it as different from any other magic. It's a means to an end. Indeed. The problem is that under the Chantry, blood magic is forbidden, so only criminals practice it. While in Deventa, magisters compete with each other instead of keeping their volatile friends in check. They always succeed through power, so they have never had the chance to learn another way. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Nothing to report, sir.
Nothing to report, sir. a fight, not us. Remember how to carry your shields. You're not hiding, you're holding. Otherwise, it's useless. Blackwall? Warden Blackwall? You're not... How do you know my name? Who said... <laughs> That's it. Help or get out. We're dealing with these idiots first. On scripts, here they come! Sorry, bastards. Good work, conscripts. Even if this shouldn't have happened, they could have... Well, thieves are made, not born. Take back what they stole. Go back to your families. You saved yourselves. You're no farmer. Why do you know my name? Who are you? I know your name because I'm an agent of the Inquisition. I'm investigating whether the disappearance of Wardens has anything to do with the murder of the Divine. Maker's balls. The Wardens and the Divine. That can't... No, you're asking so you don't really know. First off, I didn't know they disappeared. But we do that, right? No more blight, job done. Wardens are the first thing forgotten. But one thing I'll tell you, no Warden killed the Divine. Our purpose isn't political. Not here to accuse, not yet. I just need information. I've only found you. Where are the rest? I haven't seen any Wardens for months. I travel alone, recruiting. Not much interest because the Archdemon is a decade dead, and no need to conscript because there's no blight coming. Treaties give Wardens the right to take what we need, who we need. These idiots forced this fight, so I conscripted their victims. They had to do what I said, so I told them to stand. Next time, they won't need me. Grey Wardens can inspire, make you better than you think you are. I wasn't aware Grey Wardens could take whatever they want. It's complicated. If there's a Blight, everyone has to help the effort to fight it. The treaties are ancient. Outside of Blights, it's as binding as a clever tongue can make it. Do you have any idea where the other Wardens could have gone? Maybe they returned to our stronghold at Weishaupt? That's in the Anderfels, a long way north. I don't really know. 
Can't imagine why they'd all disappear at once, let alone where they disappear to. Why haven't you gone missing like the rest of them? Well, maybe I was going to. Or maybe there's a new directive, but a runner got lost or something. My job was to recruit on my own. Plan to stay that way for months, years. It's been a pleasure, Warden Blackwall, but this didn't help at all. Inquisition. Agent, did you say? Hold a moment. The Divine is dead and the sky is torn. Events like these, thinking we're absent is almost as bad as thinking we're involved. If you're trying to put things right, maybe you need a Warden. Maybe you need me. The Inquisition needs all the support it can get. But what can one Grey Warden do? Save the fucking world if pressed. Look, maybe fighting demons from the sky isn't something I'm practiced at. But show me someone who is. And like I said, there are treaties. Maybe this isn't a blight, but it's bloody well a disaster. Some will honor them. Being a Warden means something to a lot of people. Warden Blackwall, the Inquisition accepts your offer. Good to hear. We both need to know what's going on. And perhaps I've been keeping to myself for too long. This Warden walks with the Inquisition.
Nothing to report, sir. Thank you again for rescuing Ritz. Where are the Templars? They don't care who they kill anymore. I found this ring on a Templar I killed. This is it. Praise to you and the Inquisition for giving my husband justice. It won't bring him back, but his spirit will rest easier now. As will mine. Just you, alone in the vast wilderness. What are you on about? The lone wanderer searching the world. What's he trying to find? Love? Absolution? Try someone with a strong arm and stronger will to fight Darkspawn. Yes, but what does that represent? Wanting to kill more Darkspawn. Duh. You're just like Sebastian.
bandits are apostates attack. I, uh, I suppose the Inquisition is trying to protect the Shems. They're protecting everyone.
steal another of the elven artifacts. The veil fire must be making the runes legible. are helping to strengthen the veil. This area should be safer for travelers now. Nothing to report, sir. Take it to the air. Nothing to report, sir.
sense elven magic somewhere nearby. Prepare yourself. The area ahead is fortified. Your order, the Grey Wardens. What about them? The Wardens see themselves the world's defense against the Blight, do they not? Yes. Why do you sound so skeptical? Doesn't everyone know this? When an Archdemon rises, they slay it. What will they do when all the Archdemons are slain? Uh, retire? Without Archdemons, there can be no Blights. Is that the reasoning? Right. Where are you going with this? Nowhere. I hope they are correct.
decent place to camp. Up ahead. That's the camp of our mysterious friends, unless I'm mistaken.
Cole. The skull illuminates certain objects in the distance. I am not familiar with such magic. Of course, it had to be a skull that lights up creepy shit.
you have any advice for fighting demons, Solus? Survive the first 30 heartbeats, and you have already won. So I should try not to die. Helpful. I mean that demons are rarely intelligent enough to change their tactics. If you focus on defending yourself, you will see the full range of their abilities within the first 30 heartbeats. By then, you should be able to find a weakness and exploit it. Ah, that is helpful. I will try to remember that. Also, try not to die. That's what the skull helped you find? Right. Not ominous at all.
We should search the area.
There must be something here. Andraste! How much did you expend to discover me? It must have weakened the Inquisition immeasurably. I don't know who you are. You don't fool me. I'm too important for this to be an accident. My efforts will survive in victories against you elsewhere. Just say what? What is the... <laughs> Ugh. Squishy one, but you heard me, right? Just say what? Rich tits always try for more than they deserve. Blah, blah, blah! Obey me. Arrow in my face. So, you followed the notes well enough. Glad to see you're... And you're an elf. Well, hope you're not... Too elfy. I mean, it's all good, innit? The important thing is, you glow. You're the herald thingy. Sure, why not? I glow. What's going on? No idea. I don't know this idiot from manners. My people just said the Inquisition should look at him. Your people? Elves? <laughs> no. People, people. Name's Sarah. This is cover. Get round it. For the reinforcements. 
Don't worry. Someone tipped me their equipment shed. They've got no breaches. Why didn't you take their weapons? Friends really came through with that tip. No breaches. <laughs> so, Herald of Andraste. You're a strange one. I'd like to join. Well, how about we get to know each other first? You know, names and such. One name. No, wait, two. It's... Well, it's like this. I sent you a note to look for hidden stuff by my friends. The friends of Red Jenny. That's me. Well, I'm one. So is a fence in Montfort, some woman in Kirkwall. There were three in Starkhaven, brothers or something. It's just a name, yeah? It lets little people, friends, be part of something while they stick it to nobles they hate. So here, in your face, I'm Sarah. The friends of Red Jenny are sort of out there. I use them to help you. Plus arrows. The Inquisition already has friends in high places. Can you add to that prestige? Here's how it is. You important people are up here, shoving your cods around. Blah, blah, I'll crush you. I'll crush you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, crush you. <clears throat> Step down, you've got big lords with big purses, like the tit we killed. Or was he one of the endless arse lickers who follow? Doesn't matter. His grand plan was ruined by scrap torn from his desk and a red sock by someone who couldn't read it. So no, I'm not Lord Poncyfart or Ruffled, but if you don't listen down here too, you risk your breeches. Like those guards? I stole their... Look, do you need people or not? I want to get everything back to normal. Like you. All right, Sarah. I can use you and your friends. Yes! Getting good before you're too big to like. That'll keep your breeches where they should be. Plus extra breeches because I have all these... You have merchants who buy that piss, yeah? Got to be worth something. Anyway, Haven. See you there, Herald. This will be grand.
I don't understand. Even the Templars have left the channel. What's going to happen? Oh, make her hear my cry. Seat me by Thank your you side. Thank you for all that death. you are doing to her. Make me one within your glory. And let the world once more seek favor. And Mother Jesus. Will treat what may I do for you? What exactly does your job entail? I meet with ambassadors from various factions and countries and cement alliances with them. We are a young cause. Diplomacy is essential to our credibility. And you speak for the Inquisition with these nobles? I do. Someone must foster goodwill on our behalf, as well as prevent controversy as news of us spreads. How heavily are our actions scrutinized? Make no mistake. Every noble house, every throne, is waiting to see what the Inquisition does next. Many are willing to pledge support, if offers are made in just the right fashion. I intend to see that they are. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? Sir Griffith of Denerim, a most distinguished knight of the realm. He's defeated darkspawn, slain demons, chased down abominations. Just don't ask him about it over dinner. He spares no detail. Thank you. Though you had granted them power over the very fade itself, though they found them. With passion and breath does the darkness breathe. It is the There's a shield in your hand. Block with it. If this man were your enemy, you'd be dead. Lieutenant, don't hold back. The recruits must prepare for a real fight, not a practice one. Yes, Commander. We've received a number of recruits. Locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. I just hope I can help. As do we all. It is enough that you would try. I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation it caused. Sir. Cassandra sought a solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. Now it seems we face something far worse. I must have this mark for a reason. It will work, I'm sure of it. Provided we can secure aid, but I'm confident we can. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. You understand our situation? I appreciate your opinion. Look around. Our people are well organized and committed. Despite what the clerics think, we are in the best position to help. <sighs> There's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, Sir Ryden has a report on our supply lines. As I was saying.
I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already know. Anything else, I will answer as best I can. Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local Chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. But I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The Knight Captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. 13? Still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the Order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The Order sees you trained and educated first. What about your family? Did you miss them? Of course, but there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. Before coming here, my Keeper suggested I avoid Templars. Did they do anything besides hunt mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it, at times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession of the beast. You've lived in the circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that day? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. The Templars and mages never speak to each other. Some do, but Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy your training? I wanted to learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. The Templars take vows. I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages, that sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of Lyrium. Its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Can I help you with anything? Can we talk about the Bull's charges? Best company you'll find from here to the Anderfells. In my time with the Chief, we've gone up against everything from bandits to magic trees. We're expensive, but you'll never doubt we're worth it. Want to know anything in particular? Do the charges specialize in anything from a tactical standpoint? Bull doesn't want us large enough to work as an army. We're better as shock troops or skirmishers. We've got archers for hitting enemy infantry, Dalish with ma more archery, and Skinner and her people on the flanks. Rocky handles fortifications and traps, and Stitches keeps us all fighting. They mostly hold back. 
I'll lead the frontline fighters with Grimm, and the chief goes wherever he can hit something. You said something about everything from bandits to magic trees. I'll admit to some curiosity. Right. Sylvans. That's what Dalish called them. Apparently spirits can possess trees, too. Some noble in the Dales, and they really don't like it when you call them Dalish nobles, had a haunted forest. His family had abandoned the land, but he wanted it back. The chief bought us all axes, and in we went. Between the axes and the torches, the Sylvans weren't too bad. Worst part was the squirrels. Are there rules for how mercenaries operate? If you don't want some noble to treat you like bandits, yes. There's also a code of conduct most companies hold to. Keeps things civilized on the battlefield. We accept surrenders for ransom from mercenaries, nobles, and soldiers wearing a lord's colors. Our prisoners are treated well, injuries tended. We'd want the same for any of ours who got captured. We'll talk later. Did you see the message I sent? Yes, thank you. At your service. Let's see what we have. To work?
like dragon territory. Oh, this is gonna be good.
There must be something here. Redcliffe Village should be right up ahead. I want a constant watch on that damned thing. Sound the alarm at the first sign of demons. I think we could have skipped these things getting weirder, don't you? Something's not right. Stay on your guard. Make her have mercy. It's over. Open the gates. We spread word the Inquisition was coming. But you should know that no one here was expecting us. No one? Not even Grand Enchanter Fiona? If she was, she hasn't told anyone. We've arranged use of the tavern for the negotiations. Agents of the Inquisition, my apologies. Magister Alexius is in charge now, but hasn't yet arrived. He's expected shortly. You can speak with the former Grand Enchanter in the meantime. The Vale is weaker here than in Haven, and not merely weak, but altered in a way I have not seen.
apostates outside the city fighting the Templars. I wouldn't pay those rumors any mind. The mages here didn't cause any trouble. Welcome, Agents of the Inquisition. What has brought you to Redcliffe? We're here because of your invitation back in Val Royaux. You must be mistaken. I haven't been to Val Royaux since before the Conclave. Well, that's very strange, because someone who looked exactly like you spoke to me in Valroyo a few days ago. Exactly like me? I suppose it could be magic at work, but why would anyone... Whoever or whatever brought you here? The situation has changed. The free mages have already pledged themselves to the service of the Tevinta Imperium. This right here is why you can't trust mages. Andras Dezas. I'm trying to think of a single worse thing you could have done, and I've got nothing. I understand that you are afraid, but you deserve better than slavery to Devinter. As one indenture to a Magister, I no longer have the authority to negotiate with you. What about the giant hole in the veil that's spewing demons everywhere? You're just gonna pretend it isn't there. I am not forgetting the breach, but we can only fight one war at a time. The Templar threat was immediate. If we live, we can worry about the torn veil. Welcome, my friends. I apologize for not greeting you earlier. Agents of the Inquisition. Allow me to introduce Magister Girion Alexius. The Southern Mages are under my command. And you are the survivor, yes? The one from the Fade? Interesting. I'd like to know more about this alliance between the Rebel Mages and the Imperium. Certainly. What specifically do you wish to know? The Grand Enchanter told me she was indentured to a Magister. Our Southern Brethren have no legal status in the Imperium. As they were not born citizens of Tevinter, they must work for a period of ten years before gaining full rights. As their protector, I shall oversee their work for the Imperium. I'm not clear on when exactly you negotiated this arrangement with Fiona. When the Conclave was destroyed, these poor souls faced the brutality of the Templars, who rushed to attack them. It could only be through divine providence that I arrived when I did. It was certainly very timely. What does the Imperium gain from taking rebel mages under its wing? For the moment, the Southern Mages are a considerable expense. After they are properly trained, they will join our legion. You said not all my people would be military. There are children, those not suited. And one day I'm sure they will all be productive citizens of the Imperium when their debts are paid. I haven't seen any sign of Redcliffe's Arl or his men. 
The Earl of Redcliffe left the village. Left? That's a polite way of saying thrown out on his ass. There were tensions growing. I did not want an incident. I'm here to get mages to close the breach. Right, to business. I understand, of course. Felix, would you send for a scribe, please? Pardon my manners. My son Felix, friends. I am not surprised you're here. Containing the breach is not a feat that many could even attempt. There is no telling how many mages would be needed for such an endeavor. Ambitious, indeed. Does that mean you'll lend your mages to our cause? There will have to be. My lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Are you all right? I'm fine, father. Come, I'll get your powders. Please excuse me, friends. We will have to continue this another time. Fiona, I require your assistance back at the castle. I don't mean to trouble everyone. I shall send word to the Inquisition. We will conclude this business at a later date. Come to the Chantry. You are in danger. Ooh, very mysterious. We'll be careful, but we need to figure out what's going on here. Good. You're finally here. Now help me close this, would you?
fascinating. How does that work exactly? <laughs> you don't even know, do you? You just wiggle your fingers and boom. Rift closes. Who are you? Ah, getting ahead of myself again, I see. Dorian of House Parvis, most recently of Minrathus. How do you do? Watch yourself. The pretty ones are always the worst. Suspicious friends you have here. Magister Alexius was once my mentor, so my assistance should be valuable, as I'm sure you can imagine. I was expecting Felix to be here. I'm sure he's on his way. He was to give you the note, then meet us here after ditching his father. Alexius couldn't jump to Felix's side fast enough when he pretended to be faint. Is something wrong with him? He's had some lingering illness for months. Felix is an only child, and Alexius is being a mother hen, most likely. Are you a magister? All right, let's say this once. I'm a mage from Tevinter, but not a member of the Magisterium. I know Southerners use the terms interchangeably, but that only makes you sound like barbarians. Are you the one who sent that note, then? I am. Someone had to warn you, after all. Look, you must know there's danger. That should be obvious even without the note. Let's start with Alexius claiming the allegiance of the mage rebels out from under you. As if by magic, yes? Which is exactly right. To reach Redcliffe, before the Inquisition, Alexius distorted time itself. He arranged it so he could arrive here just after the Divine died. You catch on quick. That is fascinating, if true, and almost certainly dangerous. The rift you closed here. You saw how it twisted time around itself, sped some things up and slowed others down. Soon, there will be more like it, and they'll appear further and further away from Redcliffe. The magic Alexius is using is wildly unstable, and it's unraveling the world. You're asking me to take a lot on faith. I know what I'm talking about. I helped develop this magic. When I was still his apprentice, it was pure theory. Alexius could never get it to work. What I don't understand is why he's doing it. Ripping time to shreds just to gain a few hundred lackeys? He didn't do it for them. Took you long enough. Is he getting suspicious? No, but I shouldn't have played the illness card. I thought he'd be fussing over me all day. My father's joined a cult, to Vinter Supremacists. They call themselves Venatori. And I can tell you one thing. Whatever he's done for them, he's done it to get to you. Alexius is your father. Why are you working against him? For the same reason Dorian works against him. I love my father, and I love my country. But this? Cults? Time magic? What he's doing now is madness. For his own sake, you have to stop him. It would also be nice if he didn't rip a hole in time. There's already a hole in the sky. Why would he rearrange time and indenture the Mage Rebellion just to get to me? They're obsessed with you, but I don't know why. Perhaps because you survived the Temple of Sacred Ashes. You can close the rifts. Maybe there's a connection. Or they see you as a threat. If the Venatori are behind those rifts or the breach in the sky, they're even worse than I thought. All this for me? And I didn't get Alexius anything. Send him a fruit basket. Everyone loves those. You know you're his target. Expecting the trap is the first step in turning it to your advantage. I can't stay in Redcliffe. Alexius doesn't know I'm here, and I want to keep it that way for now. But whenever you're ready to deal with him, I want to be there. I'll be in touch. Oh, and Felix, try not to get yourself killed. There are worse things than dying, Dorian.
occurs to me I don't actually know much about you. What do you want to know? I'm not sure. Where are you from? My clan never stayed in one place for long, though we primarily roamed the free marches. Oh? I didn't think your people roamed that far north. But clearly I'm mistaken. I'm told some members of your clan might still be alive. Do you intend to go back? I might, once this is done. It will not be the same, once you do. I'd like to get to know you better. You would? Is that a problem? Not entirely. I'm just curious as to your motivation. No motivation beyond making things between us less... Antagonistic? Exactly. <sighs> as you wish. My name is Cassandra Pentecost, daughter of the Royal House of Navarra, 78th in line for the Navarran throne. I joined the Seekers of Truth as a young woman, and was with the Order until they withdrew from the Chantry. I remained as the Divine's right hand, carrying out her order to form the Inquisition. And here we are. That's all there is to know, my lord. You're a member of Navarra's royal family. The Pentagasts are a very large clan. Half of Cumberland could say the same. Really? No, but it feels that way. I have hundreds of relatives so distant they need charts to prove we're related at all. And they have them. Oh yes. The Pentagasts value their precious blood like it runs with gold. join the Seekers to get away from that. It was a life worth getting away from. The Pentagasts are famed for dragon hunting, but few actually pursue the craft. Most are fat and lazy. They pay lip service to the Maker and care only for idle pleasures and past glories. My brother was all that kept me in Navarra. Once he was gone, so was I. So you were the right hand to the Divine? To Divine Justinia, yes. And Divine Beatrix before her, in fact. The position is normally reserved for Templars of the Knights Divine. But my circumstances were unusual. Unusual how? You don't know the story? Thank the Maker. I will tell you if you wish. But it isn't as exciting as some drum it up to be. The short version is that I once saved the previous Divine's life. My reward was becoming her right hand. So what does a right hand do exactly? What is your hand capable of? It gives, it takes, it beckons. It makes a fist. Liliana and I extended the Divine's reach beyond the Grand Cathedral. We went where she could not. After Beatrix, I was tired of the position and wanted to return to the Seekers. But Justinia convinced me to stay. Her vision for the future gave me hope. You thought she could really change things? Justinia knew the war was coming long before it began. She tried to avert it, but the forces arrayed against her were too strong. Sometimes you have to break a bone so it can be reset. That's where the Inquisition comes in. It was to be the answer. A means to preserve as well as an agent for change. I only wish she had lived to see it. You don't seem to like your homeland much. My family polluted it for me. What little I saw of my homeland was through the bars of a gilded cage. 
My uncle treated me like a porcelain doll to be placed on a shelf and dusted only when necessary. Thus, I did not see Nevara, the real Nevara, until much later. By then, I realized I knew it not at all. Your uncle? What about your parents? They had the misfortune of taking the wrong side in the second attempt to overthrow King Marcus. The king executed them, but spared my brother and I since we were family and children at the time. Thus, we were raised by my uncle, a mortal Etasi who preferred the company of his corpses to the living. Your uncle was a mortal Etasi? A death mage. He still is. My countrymen do not burn the dead, they bury them in special crypts. The mortal Etasi supervise the crypts, like priests. Uncle Vestalis oversees the grand necropolis. Nevarans spend more time honoring dead relatives than they do with living ones. It is odd to be so fascinated with death and its trappings. I will never understand it. So what's the story about you becoming the right hand? Sweet Andraste, do you really want to hear that? It was, what, 18, 20 years ago? Some still discuss it like it happened yesterday. The tale gets bigger each time it's told. I barely recognize myself within it now. I'm sure you're just being modest. <laughs> I was there. I think I know what happened. To hear others tell it, I alone saved Divine Beatrix from a horde of dragons sent to assault the Grand Cathedral. Rather impressive for such a young seeker, wouldn't you say? And the truth is? I stumbled upon a conspiracy to kill Beatrix. A Templar Knight Commander was at its heart. And there was a dragon battle at the Grand Cathedral. But I had help from loyal mages who rallied to the cause. They freed the dragons from magical control. Without them, the Divine and I would both have died. Yet I became the right hand, and they are forgotten. to the mages that helped you? They went back to their circles, with rewards and privileges and most holy gratitude. Many of them died at the conflict. I think you're a hero, no matter how you downplay it. Fine. But it was 20 years ago. I will not rest upon my laurels.
Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Anthony. Another time, perhaps. I'll let you get back to work. That's nothing to do with fairness. We simply can't accommodate them if they... We don't have the manpower to take the castle. Either we find another way in, or give up this nonsense and go and get the Templars. Redcliffe is in the hands of a Magister. This cannot be allowed to stand. The letter from Alexius asked for the Herald of Andraste by name. It's an obvious trap. We can't waste time fighting among ourselves. We have to come to an agreement. A Tevinta Magister controls Redcliffe, invites us to the castle to talk, and some of us want to do nothing. Not this again. Redcliffe Castle is one of the most defensible fortresses in Ferelden. It has repelled thousands of assaults. If you go in there, you'll die, and we'll lose the only means we have of closing these rifts. I won't allow it. And if we don't even try to meet Alexius, we lose the mages and leave a hostile foreign power on our doorstep. Even if we could assault the keep, it would be for naught. An Orlesian Inquisition's army marching into Ferelden would provoke a war. Our hands are tied. The Magister... ...has outplayed us. We can't just give up. There has to be something we can do. We cannot accept defeat now. There must be a solution. Other than the main gate, there's got to be another way into the castle. A sewer, a water course, something. There's nothing I know of that would work. Wait. There is a secret passage into the castle, an escape route for the family. It's too narrow for our troops, but we could send agents through. Too risky. Those agents will be discovered well before they reach the Magister. That's why we need a distraction. Perhaps the envoy Alexius wants so badly. While they're focused on Lavelle, we break the Magister's defenses. It could work, but it's a huge risk. Fortunately, you'll have help. This man says he has information about the Magister and his methods, Commander. Your spies will never get past Alexius's magic without my help. So if you're going after him, I'm coming along. The plan puts you in the most danger. We can't in good conscience order you to do this. We can still go after the Templars if you'd rather not play the bait. It's up to you.
Announce us. The invitation was for Master Lavellan only. The rest of you must wait here. Where I go, they go. My Lord Magister, the agents of the Inquisition have arrived. My friend, it's so good to see you again. And your associates, of course. I'm sure we can work out some arrangement that is equitable to all parties. Are we mages to have no voice in deciding our fate? Fiona, you would not have turned your followers over to my care if you did not trust me with their lives. If the Grand Enchanter wants to be part of these talks, then I welcome her as a guest of the Inquisition. Thank you. The Inquisition needs mages to close the breach, and I have them. So, what shall you offer in exchange? The Inquisition has many backers among the Orlesian nobility. I'm sure we can find suitable compensation. I'm not sure what the Orlesian nobility have to offer that I don't already possess. He knows everything, Father. Felix, what have you done? Your son is concerned that you're involved in something terrible. So speaks the thief. Do you think you can turn my son against me? You walk into my stronghold with your stolen mark, a gift you don't even understand, and think you're in control. You're nothing but a mistake. If you know so much, enlighten me. Tell me what this mark on my hand is for. It belongs to your betters. You wouldn't even begin to understand its purpose. Father, listen to yourself. Do you know what you sound like? He sounds exactly like the sort of villainous cliché everyone expects us to be. Dorian, I gave you a chance to be a part of this. You turned me down. The Elder One has power you would not believe. He will raise the Imperium from its own ashes. That's who you serve. The one who killed the Divine. Is he a mage? Soon, he will become a god. He will make the world bow to mages once more. We will rule from the Boric Ocean to the frozen seas. You can't involve my people in this. Alexius, this is exactly what you and I talked about never wanting to happen. Why would you support this? Stop it, father. Give up the Venatori. Let the southern mages fight the breach, and let's go home. No. It's the only way, Felix. He can save you. Save me? There is a way. The Elder One promised, if I undo the mistake at the temple. I'm going to die. You need to accept that. Seize them, Venatori. The Elder One demands this man's life. <laughs> Your men are dead, Alexius. You are a mistake. You should never have existed. No! the Elder One. Where'd they come from? Get ready for... Displacement. Interesting. It's 
probably not what Alexius intended. The rift must have moved us to what? The closest confluence of arcane energy? The last thing I remember, we were in the castle hall. Let's see. If we're still in the castle, it isn't. Oh, of course, it's not simply where, it's when. Alexius used the amulet as a focus. It moved us through time. Moved us through time? Can that even be done? Normally, I would say no. Obviously, Alexius has taken his research to exciting new heights. We've seen his temporal rifts before. This time, we simply passed through one. Let's look around, see where the rift took us. Then we can figure out how to get back. If we can. What was Alexius trying to do? I believe his original plan was to remove you from time completely. If that happened, you would never have been at the Temple of Sacred Ashes or mangled his Elder One's plan. I think your surprise in the Castle Hall made him reckless. He tossed us into the Rift before he was ready. I counted it. The magic went wild, and here we are. Makes sense? It just seems so insane. I don't even want to think about what this will do to the fabric of the world. We didn't travel through time so much as punch a hole through it and toss it into the privy. But don't worry. I'm here. I'll protect you. There were others in the hall. Could they have been drawn through the rift? I doubt it was large enough to bring the whole room through. Alexius wouldn't risk catching himself or Felix in it. They're probably still where and when we left them. In some sense, anyway. Alexius mentioned an elder one in the hall. Do you know who he was talking about? Leader of the Venatori, I suspect. Some magister aspiring to godhood. It's the same old tune. Let's play with magic we don't understand. It will make us incredibly powerful. Evidently, it doesn't matter if you rip apart the fabric of time in the process. You have a plan to get us back, I hope. I have some thoughts on that. They're lovely thoughts, like little jewels.
you're not dead. You're supposed to be dead. There was a burn on the ground and everything. Alexius didn't kill us. His spell sent us through time. This is our future. Well, it's my present, and in my past, I definitely saw you both die. Are you all right? You don't look so good. Red Lyrium. If I'm lucky, it'll kill me. If not, I'm hoping I die fighting. You're dying? No, he's not. If we find Alexius, we go back and none of this will happen. Remember? Alexius isn't the one you need to worry about. It's his elder one. He killed the Empress of Orle and used the confusion to launch an invasion of the South. The army was all demons. You ever fought a demon army? I don't recommend it. We'll make Alexius regret what he's done. Let's move. No time like the present. You're alive. Where were you? How did you escape? We didn't escape. Alexius sent us into the future. Everything that happens to you is weird. You don't look so good, Varric. What happened? Bite your tongue. I look damn good for a dead man. You're no more dead than we are. The not dying version of this Red Lyrium stuff? Way worse. Just saying. We get to Alexius, and I just might be able to send us back to our own time. Simple, really. <laughs> you and I have very different definitions of the word simple. You want to take on Alexius? I'm in. Let's go. Magister's in his throne room. Vince say he locked himself in. What is the date? I need to know how much time has passed. Arvest Mia. 9.42. Dragon. 9.42? Then we've missed an entire year. We have to get out of here. Go back in time. Please. 
Stop this from happening. Alexius serves the Elder One more powerful than the Maker. No one challenges him and lives. I promise, I will do everything in my power to set things right. Our only hope is to find the amulet that Alexius used to send us here. If it still exists, I can use it to reopen the rift at the exact spot we left. Maybe. Good. I said, maybe. It might also turn us into paste. You must try your spy master, Leliana. She is here. Find her. Quickly, before the Elder One learns you're here. If we have the this infection... Maker, why is it coming out of the walls? Are you sure you want to find out? at all. I'm enjoying it while it lasts. Take a look around. See if there's anything we can use. We never died in the first place. Alexius miscalculated. Then it will be his last mistake. Do you have weapons? Good. The Magister's probably in his chambers. You aren't curious how we got here? No. Alexius sent us into the future. This, his victory, his Elder One, it was never meant to be. 
I need to find Alexius and reverse the spell. If we can get back to our present time, we can prevent this future from ever happening. And mages always wonder why people fear them. No one should have this power. It's dangerous and unpredictable. Before the breach, nothing we did. Enough. This is all pretend to you. Some future you hope will never exist. I suffered. The whole world suffered. It was real. What happened while we were away? Stop talking. I'm just asking for information. No, you're talking to fill silence. Nothing happened that you want to hear. We need to find Alexius. I'm sure he'll be in the nicer part of the castle, if there is one. Goodbye! Magister needs more power for his rituals. No! Let me, Linnea. Why does everything they do with magic have to be so creepy?
What became of Felix? Do you know? Yes, I know. And you're not going to tell me? You'll find out soon enough. Alexius is close. Make his breath. Where did Alexius find this? How did he even move it here? Can we open it? Perhaps. But it looks quite strong. How desperate and paranoid must he be? Servants must have a way through. He has to eat. Let's look around. What in Andraste's name is that? Hold on to it. I want to look at it later. Damage did Alexis' spell do? Rifts tore apart all of Southern Thedas, starting here. But whether that's his doing or the breach, who can say?
We can get that vent with the book if we sneak up on him. The elder one is interested in saving his followers.
happened here? Somebody had very questionable taste. Opportunity to look for higher ground. Get that enchanter! Let's head back to the main hall. I think I know how we'll open that door. I was worried I'd have to search the whole castle for you, Alexius. There's no longer anywhere to run. I knew you would appear again. Not that it would be now, but I knew I hadn't destroyed you. My final failure. Was it worth it? Everything you did to the world, to yourself. It doesn't matter now. All we can do is wait for the end. I'll admit, I expected a bit more fight out of you. Alas, I am not the foe you remember. All that I fought for, all that I betrayed, and what have I wrought? Ruin and death, that is nothing else. The Elder One comes for me, for you, for us all. <sighs> Felix! That's Felix. Make his breath, Alexius, what have you done? He would have died, Dorian. I saved him. Please, don't hurt my son. I'll do anything you ask. Hand over the amulet and we let him go. Let him go and I swear you get what you want. I want the world back. <laughs> no. No!
wanted to die, didn't he? All those lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. He didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. This Alexius was too far gone. The Alexius in our time might still be reasoned with. I suppose that's true. This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used, and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! Front. Keep them off your tail. No. I won't let you commit suicide. Look at us. We're already dead. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spell. You have as much time as I have hours. darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! You'll have to do better than that. Put aside all claim to Redcliffe, and we let you live. You won. There is no point extending this charade. Felix. It's going to be all right, Father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Grand Enchanter, we'd like to discuss your abuse of our hospitality. Your Majesties, when we offered the Major Sanctuary, we did not give them the right to drive our people from their homes. King Alistair, Queen Anora, I assure you, we never intended... In light of your actions, good intentions are no longer enough. You and your followers have worn out your welcome. Leave Ferelden, or we'll be forced to make you leave. But... We have hundreds who need protection. Where will we go? The Inquisition might be willing to take in the mages. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? I've known a lot of mages. They can be loyal friends if you let them. Friends who make bad decisions, but still loyal. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. A generous offer, but will the rest of the Inquisition honor it? The breach threatens all of Thedas. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. Any chance of success requires your full support. It's a generous offer. I doubt you're going to get a better one from us.
We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. We're not monsters. We can control ourselves without any outside help. This is not an issue of self-control. Even the strongest mages can be overcome by demons in conditions like these. Enough arguing. None of us were there. We cannot afford to second-guess our people. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the mages' aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. And here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. Closing the breach will require a lot of magic, and that means lyrium. I have contacts who can help. Contacts meaning smugglers? Send them word. We need every advantage. We have legitimate lyrium supply lines already. And they don't need to hear of this. Keep it under the table, and I'll do what I can to quiet rumors. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. And I'd hope to sit out the assault on the breach. Take a nap. Maybe go for a walk. What is it they say? No rest for the wicked. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're staying. Oh, didn't I mention? The south is so charming and rustic, I adore it to little pieces. I must admit, I'm surprised. We both saw what could happen, what this Elder One and his cult are trying to do. Not everything from Tevinta is terrible. Some of us have fought for eons against this sort of madness. It's my duty to stand with you. That future will not come to pass. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice, but let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory.
He wanted to die, didn't he? All those lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. Didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. This Alexius was too far gone. The Alexius in our time might still be reasoned with. I suppose that's true. This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used, and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! You have to hurry. This is bad. We'll head out front. Keep them off your trail. No. I won't let you commit suicide. Look at us. We're already dead. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spell. You have as much time as I have hours.
though darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. Put aside all claim to Redcliffe, and we let you live. You won. There is no point extending this charade. Felix. It's going to be all right, Father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Grand Enchanter, we'd like to discuss your abuse of our hospitality. Your Majesties, when we offered the Major Sanctuary, we did not give them the right to drive our people from their homes. King Alistair, Queen Anora, I assure you, we never intended... In light of your actions, good intentions are no longer enough. You and your followers have worn out your welcome. Leave Ferelden, or we'll be forced to make you leave. But... We have hundreds who need protection. Where will we go? The Inquisition might be willing to take in the mages. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? I've known a lot of mages. They can be loyal friends if you let them. Friends who make bad decisions, but still loyal. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. A generous offer. But will the rest of the Inquisition honor it? The breach threatens all of Thedas. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. Any chance of success requires your full support. It's a generous offer. I doubt you're going to get a better one from us. We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. 
What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. We're not monsters. We can control ourselves without any outside help. This is not an issue of self-control. Even the strongest mages can be overcome by demons in conditions like these. Enough arguing. None of us were there. We cannot afford to second-guess our people. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the mages' aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. Here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. Closing the breach will require a lot of magic, and that means lyrium. I have contacts who can help. Contacts meaning smugglers? Send them word. We need every advantage. We have legitimate lyrium supply lines already. And they don't need to hear of this. Keep it under the table, and I'll do what I can to quiet rumors. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinta cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. And I'd hope to sit out the assault on the breach. Take a nap. Maybe go for a walk. What is it they say? No rest for the wicked. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're staying. Oh, didn't I mention? The South is so charming and rustic. I adore it to little pieces. I must admit, I'm surprised. We both saw what could happen. What this Elder One and his cult are trying to do. Not everything from Tevinta is terrible. Some of us have fought for eons against this sort of madness. It's my duty to stand with you. That future will not come to pass. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice, but let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Hallam Shiral? Cows milking farmers? I take it you don't agree? On the contrary, I approve. Heartily. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given Southern Mages license to, well, be like Mages back home. If that means they're anything like you, I approve. Ha! There aren't many Mages back home like me. I'd believe that. I never fit in. Bloodstains are so difficult to clean, you see. So we're doomed to a future of blood magic, then? Not at first. But you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the South. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed by inches. 
Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinti, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities, believe me. Of course I believe you. The moment I saw you, I thought, there's a man who knows quality. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. What do you mean by generations of careful breeding? families of Devinta don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, with a minority. It just seems so much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Devinta? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters. I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Devinta here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. Strange? Why are you less qualified to rule than some tart with a fancy crown? <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. 
the magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the magisterium exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later, lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soperati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families vie madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Devinter legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor sods don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a Quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked... despondent. Broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew.
So I take it you're... Dalish? Is that the correct word here? Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. Little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. And I appreciate your help, Dorian. Excellent. Mutual appreciation is a grand way to begin. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Popular topic. Anything specific? There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own Divine. You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry. Or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The circles are in command. There are circles of magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use Lyria. Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce the Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman. A mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andreste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So the imperial divine is always a man. All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the south. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. surprised. It's not an opinion you should share. You did ask, if you'll recall. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. I'm not sure about that myself. Doubt is good. I like doubt. It will keep you sane. 
Me? I've seen too much to believe I know everything. The world is bigger than I, even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe, but I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. I should go. Try not to die. I would notice you were gone. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Halamshiral? Cows milking farmers? Give me time. I'm sure I'll surprise you. I suspect that's untrue. Unless you strip yourself naked and allow the Chantry to flog you into repentance. Now that would surprise me. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For majors in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern majors license to, well, be like majors back home. If that means they're anything like you, I approve. Ha! There aren't many majors back home like me. I'd believe that. I never fit in. Bloodstains are so difficult to clean, you see. So we're doomed to a future of blood magic, then? Not at first. But you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the Sun. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed, by inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Devinta, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities, believe me. Of course I believe you. The moment I saw you, I thought, there's a man who knows quality. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinta in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. 
I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems... so much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. What do you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Tevinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Tevinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters. I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Tevinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. Strange? Why are you less qualified to rule than some tart with a fancy crown? <laughs> actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That Magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. <laughs> it's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later. Lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soferati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families vie madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you.
If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinter legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Four swords don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the hundred pillars, at best. Being a Quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah. That is true. And? Did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's... how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. Well, we don't have slaves in the South. In the South, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? I suppose not, no. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own divine. You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face, like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry, or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The Circles are in command. There are Circles of Magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use Lyria. Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce the Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, 
But the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andraste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the South declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So the Imperial Divine is always a man. All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the south. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. I'm not sure about that myself. Doubt is good. I like doubt. It will keep you sane. Me? I've seen too much to believe I know everything. The world is bigger than I. Even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe. But I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked... despondent. Broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. At least we've got Inquisition troops out at Redcliffe now, giving those people some real... Appreciate your assistance. This matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your lyrium by the end of the week. I should tell you, Ambassador. The Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who was she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the Dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. Oh. Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We are becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power, instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. 
The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? And Rasti's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants, to secure peace in Thedas. The Inquisition will have plenty of time for that, between finding the Divine's murderer and sealing the breach. Busy as we are, I do have a question for you, if you've a moment. The remaining Grand Cleric sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I don't know if a miracle from Andraste saved me any more than they do. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. Do you need anything more, revered mother? Please tell me if you find something. Greetings. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Let's speak later. Farewell. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. It seems Blackwald knows nothing about the disappearance of the Grey Wardens. It's a disappointment. I am, however, glad that he is with us. Even if he was not what I expected. He seems to be a good man, and his experience will be an asset to the Inquisition. <sighs> As for the other Wardens, I suppose we will have to keep looking. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. Anything I should know? Altegan has returned to Redcliffe Castle, and resumed his duties as Lord. The people are returning, slowly but surely. Unfortunately, our show of support for the mages has angered many. I'll leave you to your work. So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel? 
Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? Dorian was sure, impossible as it seems. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witnessed. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. If that future happened, then I and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest fail to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One. You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. I'd like to keep hoping it's a coincidence, if you don't mind. I need to be able to sleep at night. Honestly, I, I think I'll give up sleeping for the foreseeable future. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But th that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? That's a good point. We should celebrate. A banquet. Something... Like a banquet. A word to Josephine, and I bet she could arrange anything. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. to approach the breach. I pray this will be enough to close it. You weren't happy with how I brought in the mages. Do you have a problem with me as well? Of course not. I have no intention of endangering your alliance, but I must ensure the safety of those here. That concern extends to the mages. They are putting themselves at risk for the Inquisition, as are you. Any precautions taken are meant to aid you, nothing more. I hope you will accept them as such. Why would Templars break away from the Chantry? The Order believes the Chantry no longer supports their efforts. Not to the extent they should. But the Templars have served the Chantry for ages. And in that time, they've come to take the Order's services for granted. Templars risk their lives against blood magic, demons, abominations, to feel as if those efforts are dismissed. Now, I may disagree with the Order's actions, but I'm here as proof of that. But I sympathize with their frustrations. What do you think of the people you work with? Who do you mean? How do you like working with Leliana? The Inquisition would not exist without her. 
I may not always agree with her methods, but she's more passionate about our cause than anyone. Cassandra may have declared the Inquisition publicly, but Liliana is just as responsible for its formation. What do you think of our ambassador? We have little in common. How she delights in meeting with nobles all day is beyond me, but I enjoy working with her. satisfied with the Inquisition's forces? Our numbers are small, but they suit our needs for the time being. Some Templars have joined us instead of following the Order. They've proven invaluable in training new recruits. I should let you get back to work. What are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do. Complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. You don't need to tell me that. I just don't know who told them I'm the one to yell at. Is it that bad? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. Well, I hope it works. What other choice do we have? Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. We wouldn't be here at all if you hadn't stood up against the Chantry. You're being kind. You're discounting your role in this. Let's close the breach. Then we can say how successful I was. So much easier to ignore when it's far away. And to actually walk out of it, to be that close. If I hadn't been saved by Inquisition soldiers, I don't know what would have happened. 
Inquisition soldiers? That's not what I've heard. I have to admit, I thought you'd be... human. Yes. It's not surprising. Humans are everywhere. It's expected. It was a foolish thought. Should have known better than to say anything. It's what you do and how you do it that's important. Just one question then. How do you think you fit in with all this? It's been a whirlwind. It's hard to say where I fit. I guess we'll have to figure that out. For me, I'll be satisfied so long as we find the bastards that killed the Divine. They owe us some answers. I've heard rumors of abandoned warden camps all over these parts. If we have time, I'd like to take a look. See if there's anything we can salvage. Let's talk about the Grey Wardens. You must know a lot about them. Ah, the Wardens. I'm afraid we're less exciting than we seem. The Blight's been over for ten years. What do Wardens do when the world's not ending? There are still Darkspawn. Just because we killed so many in Ferelden doesn't mean they're gone. And the world is not so peaceful that there's no use for good men with swords. Sometimes you have to figure out for yourself what the pledge to protect others really means. It's not always about just archdemons and blights. Where were you during the blight? I was in Ferelden. On my own, like always. Quietly killed my fair share of Darkspawn too. You haven't had contact with other Wardens for a while. Why were you on your own? It's what I've always done. Recruitment only requires one man. Besides, I've always been a loner. Works best for everyone that way. So you have no idea where the rest of the Wardens are? Do you find that odd? The Blight is over. We don't need an organized force. And orders don't change much from day to day. <laughs> for the last thousand years or so, it's been just... Find Darkspawn, kill them, repeat as necessary. Let's continue this at another time. As you wish. I'll be here if you need me. Come to me, child, and I shall embrace you in my arms. Right. Let's see what we have.
At your service. The best of the mages are ready, Harold. Be certain you are prepared for the assault on the breach. We cannot know how you will be affected. Focus past the Herald. Let his will draw from you. Solus confirms the heavens are scarred by the calm. The breach is sealed. We've reports of lingering rifts, and many questions remain. But this was a victory. Word of your heroism has spread. You know how many were involved. Luck put me at the center. A strange kind of luck. I'm not sure if we need more or less. But you're right. This was a victory of Alliance. One of the few in recent memory. With the breach closed, that alliance will need new focus. Forces approaching! To arms! What the... We must get to the gates! So, celebratory drinks are on hold. Never a dull moment for Southerners, is there? What's going on? We're under attack. 
Cullen? One watch guard reporting. It's a massive force, the bulk over the mountain. Under what banner? None. None? I can't come in unless you open. I'm Cole. I came to warn you, to help. People are coming to hurt you. You probably already know. What is this? What's going on? The Templars come to kill you. Templars? Is this the Order's response to our talks with the Mages, attacking blindly? The Red Templars went to the Elder One. You know him? He knows you. You took his Mages. There. This Elder One. Very angry that you took his mages. Cullen, give me a plan. Anything. Haven is no fortress. If we are to withstand this monster, we must control the battle. Get out there and hit that force. Use everything you can. Mages! You! You have sanctioned to engage them! That is Samson! He will not make it easy! Inquisition! With the Herald! For your life! For all of us!
Ricochet. Can't be. Can it? Everyone to the gates. Chantry. It's the only building that might hold against that beast. At this point, just make them work for it. The villagers will need help if they are to survive this.
I hear a voice. Tree is your shelter. He tried to stop a Templar. The blade went deep. He's going to die. What a charming boy. Harold, our position is not good. That dragon stole back any time you might have earned us. I've seen an archdemon. I was in the Fade, but it looked like that. I don't care what it looks like. It's cut a path for that army. They'll kill everyone in Haven. The Elder One doesn't care about the village. He only wants the Herald. If it will save these people, he can have me. It won't. He wants to kill you. No one else matters, but he'll crush them. Kill them anyway. I don't like him. You don't like... Herald, there are no tactics to make this survivable. The only thing that slowed them was the avalanche. We could turn the remaining trebuchets, cause one last slide. We were overrun. To hit the enemy, we'd bury Haven. We're dying, but we can decide how. Many don't get that choice. Yes, that. Chancellor Roderick can help. He wants to say it before he dies. There is a path. You wouldn't know it unless you'd made the summer pilgrimage, as I have. The people can escape. She must have shown me. Andraste must have shown me so I could t tell you. What do you want about, Roderick? It was whim that I walked the path. I did not mean to start. It was overgrown. Now, with so many in the Conclave dead, to be the only one who remembers... <laughs> I don't know, Harold. If this simple memory can save us, this could be more than mere accident. You could be more. What about it, Cullen? Will it work? Possibly. If he shows us the path. But what of your escape? Perhaps you will surprise it. Find a way. Inquisition, follow Chancellor Roderick through the Chantry. Move! Herald, if you are meant for this, if the Inquisition is meant for this, I pray for you. They'll load the trebuchets. Keep the Elder One's attention until we're above the tree line. If we are to have a chance, if you are to have a chance, let that thing hear you. Here we go. I hope this plan of yours works.
now! Pretender, you toy with forces beyond your ken no more. Whatever you are, I'm not afraid. Words mortals often hurl at the darkness. Once they were mine, they are always lies. Know me. Know what you have pretended to be. Exalt the Elder One, the will that is Corypheus. You will kneel. You'll... you'll get nothing out of me. You will resist. You will always resist. It matters not. I am here to anchor. The process of removing it begins now. It is your fault, Geralt. You interrupted a ritual years in the planning, and instead of dying, you stole its purpose. I do not know how you survived, but what marks you was touched, what you flail at rifts. I crafted to assault the very heaven. And you used the anchor to undo my work. The gore. What is this thing meant to do? It is meant to bring certainty where there is none. For you, the certainty that I would always come for. I once breached the Fade in the name of another to serve the old gods of the Empire in person. I found only chaos and corruption, dead whispers. For a thousand years I was confused, no more. I have gathered the will to return under no name but my own, to champion Wither to Winter and correct this blighted world. Beg that I succeed, for I have seen the throne of the gods and it was empty. Yes! The anchor is permanent. You have spoilt it with your stumbling. So be it. I will begin again. Find another way to give this world the nation and God it requires. you. I will not suffer even an unknowing rival. You must die. You expect me to fight, but that's not why I kept you talking. Enjoy your victory. Here's your prize. <laughs>
the maker. What would you have me tell them? This isn't what we asked them to do. We cannot simply ignore this. We must find a way. And who put you in charge? We need a consensus or we have nothing. Please, we must use reason. Without the infrastructure of the Inquisition, we're hobbled. I can't come from nowhere. She didn't say it could. Enough! This is getting us nowhere. Well, we're agreed on that much. Shh. You need to rest. They've been at it for hours. They have that luxury thanks to you. The enemy could not follow. And with time to doubt, we turn to blame. Infighting may threaten as much as this Corypheus. Do we know where Corypheus and his forces are? We are not sure where we are. Which may be why, despite the numbers he still commands, there is no sign of him. That, or you are believed dead. Or without Haven, we are thought helpless. Or he girls for another attack. I cannot claim to know the mind of that creature, only his effect on us. If they're arguing about what we do next, I need to be there. Another heated voice won't help, even yours, perhaps especially yours. Our leaders struggle because of what we survivors witnessed. We saw our defender stand, 
and fall. And now we have seen him return. The more the enemy is beyond us, the more miraculous your actions appear, and the more our trials seem ordained. That is hard to accept, no? What we have been called to endure, what we perhaps must come to believe, I escaped the avalanche. Barely, perhaps, but I didn't die. Of course, and the dead cannot return from across the veil. But the people know what they saw, or perhaps what they needed to see. The Maker works both in the moment and in how it is remembered. Can we truly know the heavens are not with us? You saw Corypheus? What do you think of his claims of assaulting the heavens? Scripture says magisters, to winter servants of false old gods, entered the Fade to reach the Golden City, seat of the Maker. For their crime, they were cast out as darkspawn. Their hubis is why we suffer blight, and why the Maker turned from us. If such is the claim of this Corypheus, he is a monster beyond imagining. All mankind continues to suffer for that sin. If even a shred of it is true, all the more reason Andraste would choose someone to rise against him. Griffia said he found only corruption and emptiness, nothing golden. If he entered that place, it has changed him without and within. The living are not meant to make that journey. Perhaps these are lies he must tell himself, rather than accept that he earned the scorn of the Maker. I know I could not bear such. Perhaps I was meant for this, but that didn't help at Haven. I want to believe Andraste is with me, but doubt is everywhere. is made stronger by facing doubt. Untested, it is nothing. A word.
The humans have not raised one of our people so high for ages beyond counting. Her faith is hard won, Lethalan. Worthy of pride, save one detail. The threat Corypheus wields. The orb he carried. It is ours. Corypheus used the orb to open the breach. Unlocking it must have caused the explosion that destroyed the Conclave. We must find out how he survived. And we must prepare for their reaction when they learn the orb is of our people. All right. What is it, and how do you know about it? Such things were foci, said to channel power from our gods. Some were dedicated to specific members of our pantheon. All that remains are references in ruins, and faint visions of memory in the Fade, echoes of a dead empire. But however Corypheus came to it, the orb is elven, and with it, he threatens the heart of human faith. Didn't you see? The people trust me implicitly. Faith tends to make martyrs of its champions. Whatever the case, that trust cannot grow in the wilderness. You will need every advantage. By attacking the Inquisition, Corypheus has changed it, changed you. Scout to the north, be their guide. There is a place that waits for a force to hold it. There is a place where the Inquisition can build, grow. They arrive daily from every settlement in the region. Skyhold is becoming a pilgrimage. If word has reached these people, it will have reached the Elder One. We have the walls and numbers to put up a fight here, but this threat is far beyond the war we anticipated. But we now know what allowed you to stand against Corypheus. What drew him to you? He came for this, and now it's useless to him, so he wants me dead. That's it. The Anchor has power, but it's not why you're still standing here. Your decisions let us heal the sky. Your determination brought us out of Haven. You are the creature's rival because of what you did. And we know it. All of us. The Inquisition requires a leader. The one who has already been leading it.
you. Perhaps I didn't hear you correctly. A mage at the head of the Inquisition. Not a mage. You. I happen to be a mage. I will not pretend no one will object, but times are changing. Perhaps this is what the Maker intended. There would be no Inquisition without you. How it will serve, how you lead, that must be yours to decide. Fear running rampant. They need to see a mage standing for what is right. I'll defeat Corypheus standing with them, not over them. Wherever you lead us. Have our people been told? They have. And soon, the world. Commander, will they follow? Inquisition, will you follow? <laughs> So this is where it begins. It began in the courtyard. This is where we turned that promise into action. But what do we do? We know nothing about this Corypheus except that he wanted your mark. Corypheus wants to restore to Winter. Is this a prelude to war with the Imperium? I get the feeling we're dealing with extremists, not the vanguard of a true invasion. Tevinter is not the Imperium of a thousand years ago. What Corypheus yearns to restore no longer exists. Though they would shed no tears if the South fell to chaos, I'm certain. Corypheus said he wanted to enter the Black City, that this would make him a god. He is willing to tear this world apart to reach the next. It won't matter if he's wrong. What if he's not wrong? if he finds some other way into the Fade. Then he gains the power he seeks, or unleashes catastrophe on us all. Could his dragon really be an archdemon? What would that mean? It would mean the beginning of another blight. We've seen no darkspawn other than Corypheus himself. Perhaps it's not an archdemon at all, but something different? Whatever it is, it's dangerous. Commanding such a creature gives Corypheus an advantage we can't ignore. Could he strike at us here? We can't have a repeat of what happened at Haven. Skyhold has the bones to withstand Corypheus. After what you did with one trebuchet, I'd bet against direct attack. We do have one advantage. We know what Corypheus intends to do next. In that strange future you experienced, Empress Selene had been assassinated. Imagine the chaos her death would cause. With his army, an army he'll bolster with a massive force of demons, or so the future tells us. Corypheus could conquer the entire south of Thedas, god or no god. <sighs> I'd feel better if we knew more about what we were dealing with. I know someone who can help with that. Uh, everyone acting all inspirational jogged my memory, so I, I sent a message to an old friend. He's crossed paths with Corypheus before and may know more about what he's doing. He can help. I'm always looking for new allies. Introduce me. Uh, parading around might cause a fuss. It's better for you to meet privately, on the battlements. Trust me. 
It's complicated. Well, then, uh, we stand ready to move on both of these concerns. On your order, Inquisitor. I know one thing. If Varric has brought who I think he has, Cassandra is going to kill him. This is the Inquisition. A dusty old ruin filled with battered soldiers. If you shut your mouth and open your eyes, you'd see that the Inquisition is our one. was this place? So much room for whatever was here. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? I was distracted, that's all. Distracted? By my wit and charm? I have plenty of both. Today, at least. Oh, you wound me. I always assumed the Elder One behind the Venatori was a Magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinta, they say the Chantry's tales of Magisters starting the Blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very Magisters. A Dark Spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Darkspawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? We only know what Corypheus claims to be. True. He might be a convincing liar, or delusional, or insane. But how many delusional maniacs are going to have that knowledge? He broke open the Fade. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth. But I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no. It was us all along. We destroyed the world. You didn't do anything. Those men did. A thousand years ago. True, except that one of them is up and walking around right now. Not to mention I have idiot countrymen who would happily follow him down that path again. No one will thank me whatever happens. No one will thank you either. You know that, yes? That's not why I'm doing this. I knew there was something clever about you. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way.
was this place? So much room for whatever was here. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? I was distracted, that's all. Distracted? By my wit and charm? I have plenty of both. How interesting to find someone so aware of his strengths. I'm a man of many talents. What can I say? I always assumed the elder one behind the Venatori was a magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinter, they say the Chantry's tales of magisters starting the blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very magisters, a dark spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the blight? You know how it is, not us. They say dark spawn were always there. Magisters and the blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the magisters who entered the Black City and he's dark spawn, what other explanation is there? We only know what Corypheus claims to be. True. He might be a convincing liar, or delusional, or insane. But how many delusional maniacs are going to have that knowledge? He broke open the Fade. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth. 
But I assumed there had to be a kernel of it. Somewhere. But no. It was us all along. We destroyed the world. You didn't do anything. Those men did. A thousand years ago. True. Except that one of them is up and walking around right now. Not to mention I have idiot countrymen who would happily follow him down that path again. No one will thank me, whatever happens. No one will thank you, either. You know that, yes? That's not why I'm doing this. I knew there was something clever about you. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius's son. He went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. The Blight caught up with him. Are you all right? He was ill. And thus on borrowed time anyhow. That doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter could use more majors like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. With the two of you... Felix and I? What an odd question. No. I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around, you knew things could be better. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Thedas. you roam Skyhold all day. Here and there you run, checking in on your followers. Why don't they come to you, feed you grapes, rub your shoulders? I suppose it's more fun this way. For me, I mean. You're rather strapping. I've noticed you're rather strapping yourself. Of course you yeah. That only takes eyes. Luckily I have those. <laughs> you do. A rather fetching pair. At any rate, you didn't pass by to hear me fawn. Something on your mind? You said Alexius was a mentor of yours. He was my patron, sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption. How we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he... gave up. He stopped trying. Why did he give up? On a journey to Hosburg, a Darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. 
guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while, and then we drifted apart. That must have been difficult. Back then, I was furious. I told him to snap out of it, move on. I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. Plus, I was busy drinking. One must have priorities. Was it hard being away from him? It was hard not having a patron, yes. I'm not exactly built to fit in. At any rate, he's fallen so low, I doubt he'll ever get up. Sad, really. I should go. Try not to kill anyone without me. Inquisitor? My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the Devinter. Nothing good, I expect. If you have reservations about his presence here, I share them. But this is another matter. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... What kind of meeting do you have in mind? I believe they just want to talk, to understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. Somewhat private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. What happens if Dorian doesn't agree? Hopefully that will be the end of it. If not... Well... 
That's why you should be there. Why would his family contact you? Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry, but they know what I represent. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he does not care for me. Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. They don't want Dorian to know. That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse, and the letter implies he'd have cause. Yet... Are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venatori? Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Ah, oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. There is something I wish to discuss, Inquisitor. My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your uh, companions, the Tevinto. Oh. Has Dorian done something wrong? No, thankfully. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... Just what kind of meeting do you have in mind? I believe they just want to talk, to understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. Somewhere private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. 
They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. What happens if Dorian doesn't agree? Hopefully that will be the end of it. If not, well, that's why you should be there. Why would his family contact you? Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry, but they know what I represent. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he does not care for me. Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. They don't want Dorian to know. That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse, and the letter implies he'd have cause. Yet, they are remorseful for whatever came before. This is a chance for dialogue. There is deceit in bringing the young man to this meeting without his foreknowledge, I know. But does it not lead to a greater kindness if there is potential for reconciliation? Are, are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venatori? Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. So I take it you're... Dalish? Is that the correct word here? Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. Little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. And I appreciate your help, Dorian. Excellent. Mutual appreciation is a grand way to begin. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son? What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman, hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinter. That would be hard to do while I stood there. He expects me to travel with Mother Giselle, although Maker knows why he'd think I would. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with a message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married. Because you left. That too. I think you should meet with this retainer. 
Find out what your family wants. I didn't ask what you thought, did I? That was unworthy, I apologize. There'd be no harm in hearing what this man of my father's has to say. If I don't like it, however, I want to leave. Your parents are reaching out to you. Doesn't that mean something? Only that they're trying to choke me. Don't mind me. Let's see what comes of this.
There must be something here. Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just, what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the Dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? This is how it has always been. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, Father. Talk to me. Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. I'll need you to explain that. Did I stutter? Men and the company thereof as in sex. Surely you've heard of it. I've more than heard of it, actually. No. The Herald of Andraste. I am shocked and scandalized. Such sarcasm. You're not exactly subtle, O oh Lord Inquisitor. I should have known that's what this was about. No. You don't get to make those assumptions. You know nothing about the Inquisitor. This is not what I wanted. I'm never what you wanted, Father. Or had you forgotten? That's a big concern in Tevinter, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tevinter family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. Your father might be here to reach out. You could give him a chance. Let's just go. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. 
But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you? Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again, to ask him to forgive me. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. He tried to change you? Out of desperation. I wouldn't put on a show, marry the girl, keep everything unsavory, private and locked away. Selfish, I suppose. Not to want to spend my entire life screaming on the inside. He was going to do a blood ritual, alter my mind, make me acceptable. I found out. I left. Can blood magic actually do that? Maybe. It could also have left me a drooling vegetable. It crushed me to think he found that absurd risk preferable to scandal. Part of me has always hoped he didn't really want to go through with it. If he had... I can't even imagine the person I would be now. I wouldn't like that, Dorian. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but... It's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I don't think less of you. More, if possible. The things you say. I mean it. My father never understood. Living a lie, it festers inside of you like poison. You have to fight for what's in your heart. I agree. I see you enjoy playing with fire, Inquisitor. At any rate, Time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind.
Fancy meeting you here. I need to talk to you. Could at least bring me wine? Loosens the tongue, so to speak. I was hoping to steal a moment alone with you. <laughs> I need to talk to you, he says. Have it your way, but let's go where a hundred onlookers won't think I'm stealing the Inquisitor's soul. Inquisitor. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your anchor, as Corypheus calls it, allows you some control over the breach. That suggests it was deliberate. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. Sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful. And the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about demons. Your Dalish say the demons hate the natural world seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them? If not in peace, at least without such active confrontation. Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye.
glad I'm working with you. I'm not one of them. What? Assassins? Templars? Sent? Yes, Commander. Send men to scout the area. We need to know what's out there. Yes, sir. Commander, soldiers have been assigned temporary quarters. Very good. I'll need an update on the armory as well. Now! We set up as best we could at Haven, but could never prepare for an archdemon, or whatever it was. With some warning, we might have... We were all shaken by what happened. If Corypheus strikes again, we may not be able to withdraw. And I wouldn't want to. We must be ready. Work on Skyhold is underway. Guard rotations established. We should have everything on course within the week. We will not run from here, Inquisitor. How many were lost? Most of our people made it to Skyhold. It could have been worse. Morale was low, but has improved greatly since you accepted the role of Inquisitor. Everyone has so much faith in my leadership. I hope I'm ready. You won't have to carry the Inquisition alone, although it must feel like it. We needed a leader, and you have proven yourself. You responded quickly to the attack on Haven. Without that, so many more would have died. I'm grateful for any help you can give. Thank you, Inquisitor. I will do everything I can to ensure the security of our people. You have my word. But this violates everything we know about the Fade. So it does. Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. A demon, more likely. If you prefer. Although the truth is somewhat more complex. Cole warned us about Corypheus at Haven. He saved a lot of lives. We cannot know the true motivations of a demon. In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. In my studies, demons either possess something from this world, or were summoned and bound. They almost never look like something you'd mistake for a person. Normally you'd be correct. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. 
The demons who came through the breach, or through the rifts, weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. I can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white, pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. You're feeling their pain. It's louder this close, with so many of them. Would you like to go somewhere more comfortable? Yes, but here is where I can help. Every breath slower, like lying in a warm bath, sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked brown pain, dry, scraping, thirsty, here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. You're using your powers as a spirit to help people. Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt. The helpless. There's someone. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. You say he won't die for hours yet, but you can't know that for certain. His body is failing. He could recover. Or the healers could find another way to help him. How do you know? I don't, and neither do you. That's part of life. Try. I want to stay.
They've certainly spared no expense. <laughs> 